Hello, today I'm going to look at what to sow in March. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. Well there are plenty of seeds I can sow in March but I want to start by reminding you that you need to adjust your sowing times uh, according to your area and to the weather. There's absolutely no point in sowing seeds that are, are not going to germinate or, and you'll just need to go out and buy more seeds and re-sow at a later date. So have a look online, check your frost dates uh, and plant accordingly because if you're sowing seeds now uh, and you need to get them outside in a few weeks time you don't want to be putting them out into frosty or snowy ground. Last month I talked about some of the seeds that you could sow uh, with heat uh, and under cover. But in March, there are some seeds that you can get straight out into the ground. So I'll start with those. No seeds are going to do well unless the growing conditions are right for them. Uh, we've had an awful lot of rain uh, in the last month. And so to prepare the ground, uh, you could uh, cover it with some fleece for a couple of weeks uh, or with some uh, black plastic or cardboard just to warm the soil a bit uh, before you start sowing some seeds. I've got some golden beetroot here. Um, this will go in. Uh, I'm going to sow some in the polytunnel, but I'm actually going to sow some outside as well. Uh, so I get a, a staggered harvesting time on them. I really like beetroot. And I know I always say I like beetroot and it doesn't actually seem to matter uh, what sort of beetroot it is. I like them all. So I'm going to be covering my soil now just to warm it up. And then from mid-March, uh, I will be getting some of these sown. You could also sow uh, a beetroot coloured beetroot, uh, the purpley red ones, uh, something like Cylindra or Bolt Hardy. They can also be sown uh, towards the end of March outside. Uh, but I'm going to leave uh, sowing the Chiogia, which is the uh, pink and white candy striped uh, ones until April. Uh, but some beetroot can go into the ground now. And you know, nearly every seed packet, if you're buying, uh, buying them packeted, nearly every packet uh, has a sowing guide on them. It is only a guide, uh, and so uh, don't rush to get things into the ground. Um, stuff planted two or three weeks later uh, will catch up just as well. And Brussels sprouts can be started now. Uh, this variety is called Idamar. Um, I'm also uh, sowing uh, Evesham something, and I can never remember what it's called, but the one that's called Evesham. Um, these can go into a seed bed uh, outside. So uh, sow them in a seed bed, uh, allow them to grow on a little bit, and then in a few weeks time, uh, they can be transplanted uh, or you can thin them to the correct spacing uh, in the bed that they're in. There's a couple of cabbages uh, that could be sown out in the open now. Uh, I have filled the crop, which I talked about uh, last time, and that is the summer cabbage uh, with a pointy top. I really liked the flavour of it. It was great cooked, it was great in coleslaw. Uh, and the other one that I have um, is a Savoy cabbage. Uh, this variety is called Virtus um, and can be sown. So she's just checking the dates. Uh, can be sown from mid-March onwards uh, outside. Again, pop them into a seed bed uh, when they're uh, large enough to handle. So maybe about four true leaves uh, you can then get them into their permanent place. Don't forget to uh, protect from uh, cabbage white, butterfly and cabbage moth. Uh, and I use uh, a netting um, system. I push piping into the ground uh, on each side of the bed and get some netting over it um, and hold that down with bits of wood or pin it down uh, to stop the butterflies getting in. That seems to work really well for us. At the end of last month, uh, I was saying that I was going to wait right to the end of February to start sowing very much and indeed that's been the case. I sowed a few things uh, last week, I've sown a little bit more today. You can sow some carrots outside now, something like uh, the Amsterdam uh, forcing, either a sprint or a solo. Uh, I've got a Nance 2 here and because I want a succession of harvest uh, for my carrots I'll be sowing those about every three weeks from now uh, till about the end of July. You can get some leafy greens uh, like leaf beet into the ground now. Uh, this is a variety called Five Colours uh, and it is, as it suggests, uh, five different colours. Uh, but the leaves aren't. Uh, the leaves are, are either uh, a deep plummy reddy purple colour uh, or they're green. Uh, and what is a different colour? Uh, the stems and the veining through the leaves. 
and they come in and I never get <laughs> remember these properly um, red white yellow pink uh, and an orange color and you can get a very very deep um, red color which is a ruby one and I can't remember uh, whether this has a ruby in it uh, or not uh, and because I'm not sure I will um, sew a ruby one as well uh, just to make sure Leaf beets are great for using in salads uh, and in stir fries. Uh, you can use them uh, as a side dish. They're actually much more versatile than I expected them to be. And not very long ago uh, on the television, I actually saw someone uh, putting spinach into a cake uh, and it really worked. So it might even be worth uh, trying <laughs> putting some uh, the leaf beet leaves into a cake. Um, it's a sneaky way uh, to get some more greens into your family. I'm often asked about the varieties that we grow and where to get the seeds from. Uh, so I've pulled together a list of uh, every variety that we grew last year, uh, all the plants that are growing uh, in our garden here. And if you'd like access to those lists, all you need to do uh, is sign up for our newsletter and in our next newsletter, uh, there will be a, a link taking you through to some hidden pages on our website uh, where you'll be able to peruse those. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description box so you can sign up for our newsletter. And you can start sowing some lettuces outdoors during March. Uh, I've got a mixed leaf uh, lettuce, so it's a whole variety uh, of different shapes, uh, colours and textures of leaves. Uh, I find that really useful because I like to um, pick my salads as cut and come again. So taking a few leaves uh, from around the outside of the plant uh, and leaving it to grow a little longer. That way I find I get a longer harvesting period uh, and I'm not wasting any leaves in the kitchen. Now this isn't a new idea and if you watch uh, Charles Dowding's videos uh, you'll know that he takes leaves from around the outside of the plants uh, and leaves the centre to continue growing. I can't really uh, sit by all these lettuces without passing comments about them. Uh, these are a variety called Winter Density. They have grown in the polytunnel uh, right through winter. Um, I've been harvesting them regularly. Uh, I started by just taking a few leaves from the outside and then uh, in the depths of winter when I wasn't hugely keen uh, to be eating a lot of salad, I've just let them grow on uh, and look how lovely they are now. They're really starting to heart up. Um, although the outer leaves uh, are a little tough now, uh, they're fine if they're wilted. Um, you just wilt them uh, in a pan um, with a little bit of butter or something like that and black pepper and an egg on top of them. Uh, they're being almost a spinach replacement at the moment. So they're very nice. I'm really pleased with these. I will be growing these uh, again next year. At some point in March, you can start sowing peas. Uh, these ones on the back here suggest mid-March to mid-July. Um, I probably won't get uh, any peas in outside until the end of March. And the way I sow peas is to create a shallow drill about uh, six to eight inches wide, a couple of inches deep, uh, down the whole length of a bed, uh, and then to scatter in. Uh, you can put them in uh, very neat rows. Uh, I tend to scatter uh, my peas across that drill, almost a broad sowing of them, uh, and then cover them over and pretty much immediately put up either pea sticks or pea netting, depending on the variety. So if it's a short variety uh, that doesn't grow too tall, pea sticks will do. And I've been saving my corkscrew willow uh, for doing just that. This is a corkscrew willow. So I'm gonna keep these sticks uh, because they're really good for growing peas up. Uh, or if it's a taller variety, uh, you might need to put up some netting and there are a whole uh, load of different forms of support that you can create for peas, but uh, pea netting is a very easy way of doing that. And uh, I've also got pea Oregon sugar pod, uh, which I grow uh, as a mange too. These are just delightful. Uh, you can see how, <laughs> how big a packet I have of these. I grow a lot of them uh, and that's because I tend to pick quite a lot of them while I'm gardening uh, and eat them before they even get to the kitchen. Uh, so I want plenty of them, uh, some for me, some for the kitchen, uh, but also some for our veg boxes. If you've enjoyed this video uh, or found some value in it, please give it a thumbs up. 
or leave a comment. Or better still, uh, watch a couple more videos because that will tell YouTube that you're really enjoying this channel. And don't forget, you can still sew uh, everything I talked about last month uh, for sewing uh, with heat or undercover. You can do that throughout March too. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time. So I grow uh, a red cabbage and I grow uh, two or three green crab cabbage and I grow two or three green and I grow two or three green crab